The Holy Spirit holds everything together, the organization of the church. This is written by theologian Dr. Lambros Gonzu. The great feast of Pentecost and the Monday of the Holy Spirit constitute another important celebratory station of the ecclesiastical life, during which we worship the Holy Triune God, the Holy Trinity, the one only true God, and honor the Holy Spirit, who has the leading role in this great despotic feast of our Lord. His blessed descent and in the courtyard of Jerusalem on the completion of the day of Pentecost, where the holy apostles were gathered all with one accord on this opening a new chapter in the history of the world, the birth of the church. The Holy Spirit, he came to recreate the crumbling structure of the fallen world, to pour forth the endless rivers of God's saving uncreated energies and to set the course of mankind on a new course to lead into all truth those sitting in darkness, in the land of shadows and death, to remove the curse of the division of human societies, the cause of eternal evil spirits, uniting every human person and the whole of humanity in one body, the body of Christ, his holy church, since, as the Apostle Paul emphasized, thanks to the presence and the work of the paraclete, the holy spirit of truth, now many members, but not one body, to the unity of all called, we sing triumphantly during the Holy Feast, having the certainty that there is no other way of unity except the Church, the mystical body of our Redeemer Christ, nor any other way of salvation. After all, Saint Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, is considered the birthday of the Church, since with the inspired sermon of the Apostle Saint Peter, having accepted his word, they were baptized and on that day 3,000 souls were added to the church, constituting the first members of the Church of Jerusalem, the first selves of the mystical body of Christ. Our Holy Church is, according to biblical theology, the body of Christ, and he is the head of the body, Ephesians 5.23, and the Holy Spirit is the soul of the church body. As in the physical human body, the soul animates the body, so the presence of the paraclete animates the church, makes the ecclesiastical body robust, strong, and immortal. This means that the members of the body, the believers, live in the church, thanks to the Holy Spirit, the real life. And in it we exist, we are fed with heavenly food, the Holy Communion. We are graced, we are sanctified, we are saved, and we are divine since the love of God is poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. St. John Chrysostom emphasizes that the Holy Spirit and the Church are identical. It is an ontological feature of the Church that the presence of the Holy Spirit creates between the members of divine kinship, superior to any other kinship and unity. The old and the young, the poor and the rich, the child and the youth, the woman and the man, and every soul in it, what's going on, and is probably a body for the greater kinship, the greater and precision, precision of the union. The Apostle of the Gentiles, St. Paul, unequivocally emphasizes that no one can say Lord Jesus but, the Holy, but in the Holy Spirit. This means that the paraclete God is now the master of the church and the world, after the ascension of Christ, he makes us know our Savior, Jesus Christ, and activates his saving work in every person who wants to be saved, always inside the church and not outside it. Consequently, not only the denial of the redemptive work of Christ, but also the denial of the participation of the Holy Spirit in the redemptive process of the world is a primary cause of the loss of salvation for many. The presence of the Holy Spirit in the world is manifested in a variety of ways with divisions of gifts and divisions of ministries, with divisions of actions, with the bearing of spiritual fruits. Every good and gift given to people is a product of the Holy Spirit. To every man, the manifestation of the Spirit is given in his interest, and for this reason the Church sings, the Holy Spirit always bestows, prophecies flow, the priest is perfect, the illiterate he taught wisdom, he raised up theologians, everything constitutes the institution of the Church. The Holy Spirit distributes gifts to believers which are useful for their own salvation,
but also for the salvation uh, and the work, the saving work of the church. To another is given the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith in the same spirit, to another gifts of healing in the same spirit, to another workings of power, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another genera languages, by the way interpretation of languages, the one in the same spirit does not always act like this. They divide each one as it wills. St. Basil the Great notes, the spirit is also understood as all existing in the parts through the distribution of the gifts. For although the gifts and grace that God has given us may differ, we are certainly members of one another. The Holy Spirit distributes ministry of, to the people of God which exist to universally minister to their spiritual and material needs in such a way that the believer lives exclusively in the grace of God and does not need the dogs of the world. The Church of God exists to completely and universally transform the man of sin and decay into a new generation of graceful existence. The Holy Spirit appointed bishops to shepherds of the Church to shepherd the Church of the Lord and God he then defined in the church first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers and powers, those having the gifts of healings. This arrangement and endowment of the gifts had been decided by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, for the ministry of God's people. The Holy Spirit bears fruit in the hearts of believers, wonderful and rare spiritual fruits as a result of painstaking cultivation. The divinely inspired apostle, after mentioning the abominable works of the flesh, which are the fruits of the sin, then lists the fruits of the Spirit as love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. The fruits of the flesh demonstrate the man of the fall, sin and corruption, and the fruits of the Spirit reveal his city above the text, and the reborn in Christ, man of grace and salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ had told us that by the fruit of the tree, the tree is made known. So also the spiritual reborn man stands out from the fruits of the Holy Spirit who is adorned. The Holy Spirit continues the redemptive work of our Christ after his ascension to heaven. According to the Lord's foretelling, it's good for you that I depart, for I do not depart. The Spirit of truth, the paraclete, will, the comforter, will not come to you if I do not go. I will send him to you for our own spiritual interest, for the ministry of our salvation. The spirit of truth, the comforter, was sent by God, the Father, into the world to remain forever, to teach us, to support us, to comfort us, and to guard us from the burning arrows of the wicked. He pours out the uncreated gifts of God to men and the whole of creation. This is the real ritual of the holy mysteries of our church, through which we believers are sanctified and saved. He makes the ministers of our church his gracious instruments for the accomplishment of the saving work of God's people. He inspires spirits of prophecy and wisdom. He distributes gifts and brings about our adoption to God. He con constitutes the whole institution of the church. The Holy Spirit protects the church from the, sch the schemes uh, of the organs of error and falsehood because heresy and all malice are seeds of the devil, and therefore he cuts off the deluded from the grace of God and binds him to the chariot of destruction, since heresy is synonymous with the loss of salvation. The holy and God-bearing fathers, in order to define the saving truth of the church, ask for the illumination of the Holy Spirit, and they decided, glory, fire the Holy Spirit in us, whatever the spirit of truth showed us, we define as the true faith of the Church, which is synonymous with salvation. It's necessary to mention how the manslayer from the beginning, the devil, knowing the catalytic work of the paraclete, the comforter in the world, show, sowed and continues to sow fallacies questioning his divine person. And this because the Father can never be understood without the Son, says St. Gregory of Nyssa, nor the Son without the Holy Spirit. As it's impossible to ascend to the Father if one does not ascend through the Son, in this way it's impossible to say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. 
he strives to break this very relationship of the divine persons of the triune God, the Godhead, and to insult the saving faith of men. First, the heretical monarchians appeared, then the spirit warriors in the Middle Ages, and the heretical papacy demoted the Holy Spirit with the terrible heresy of the Filioque in modern times, the anti-Trinitarian Protestants, for example, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, etc., deny his person, personal existence and deity. A horrible fallacy has recently appeared in the world of ecumenism, so the so-called economy of the spirit, and according to it, the Holy Spirit activates salvation outside the church, which is, of course, not true. That is, in the schisms, sects, and religions of the world, ignoring the faith of the church. Outside the church, there is no salvation, said St. Cyprian of Carthage, and clearly canceling the unique redemptive work of Christ. Therefore, the presence of our Lord advocate in the church, the spirit of truth, the comforter, the paraclete, is so important that, oh, no spirit, even if the church did not meet, St. Chrysostom emphasized, thanks to his present, we experience the mystery of the kingdom of God and taste his empty saving gifts. We see the true light, we receive the heavenly spirit, we find by faith the truth in divisible trinity, worshiping it for it saved us. We have no other beneficial and saving choice than to close the womb of worship and worship to him and ask him for the enlightenment of knowledge and psychosomatic cleansing from all the pollution of sin in order to claim salvation and become partakers of the heavenly and endless kingdom of God. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.